What's up, everybody? How y'all feeling? Word? How y'all feeling? My name is Terrence Nance. And I directed what you just saw. Excuse me, there's a bit of a delay. So if I speak strangely, that's what it is. I'm gonna introduce a man who needs no introduction, Andre 3000. What's up, peoples? So we here to uh, this delay giving me something. Yeah, one, 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 one. We here to talk about new blue sun listening. And we have a bunch of questions from the nation. We're here in New York City, live. What's up, New York City? Yeah. And the first question is from Jammin. I love that. In Orange Park. Where's Orange Park at? I don't know. Y'all don't know. We'll find out. But Jammin got a question. He wants you to explain the feelings you were having when you completed the album. Um, I think while we were making it, um, I, was, I think the third song in, I kind of felt that we had something. So from that point on, it was all gravy because I knew we had something to present. So when we finished the album, and if you do music, you know when you say, I, I finished the album, you really ain't finished the album. Like you're still working on it. So to be quite honest, at one point, uh, New Blue Sun was a three hour long album. And yeah, and um, and you'll hear some of them songs too in a while. But um, and carving it, and we knew, you know, this is the right way, this is the right order. So you really not finish until it's out of your hands, you know, to like the very last day. But that feeling upon completion is um, it's a relief. It's a relief, and then you just happy to share it. you're ready you're like ready to share it. so i started playing it i started playing it with four friends uh started playing it for uh director homies um musician homies uh just my homies homies that i felt would never get new blue sun um but i just like to to you know hear the the feedback so yeah yeah <clears throat> cool next question is from benjamin which that's not Benjamin, true, right? hey. Benjamin's here in New York. Raise your hand, where you at? Benjamin. What up, man? Hey. <laughs> so Benjamin wanna know, what is the connection between all the people in the song, Gandhi, Dalai Lama, your Lord and Savior, JC, Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, and John Wayne KC? Yeah, that, uh, that title, uh, it was really just me trying to show the extremes of a balance more than anything. It wasn't, you know, hard thought, you know, or I wasn't trying to get at anybody or, you know, wasn't trying to um, to do anything that, that hopefully I'd piss anybody off, but I wanted to put those names right next to each other, you know, just so, just a reminder, like as humans, um, I mean, we all have like good and bad in us. It's just the choice that you want to do. So nobody's all good, nobody's all bad. So it was kind of like, that was just the most extreme way I could I can think. And I'm, I'm a crazy, like I'm a big serial killer, uh, true crime, I watch them all. I know, I know about them all. I just, you know, I'm just interested to know, like how do you just go around offing people? You know what I mean? So I just want to know. And so I think uh, that probably just bled into some of my song titles, but um, yeah, it was just a extreme balance title. <clears throat> Jason. Kill San Antonio. <laughs> to Curious control. to know about Sunrise and Coltrane, if they had any influence on you making the album. For sure. Um, 
Funny enough, uh, as a child, child, like like 14, 13, jazz to me was old people music. It was music that old people listen to in elevators. I mean, because when you're a kid and you got rap music around and it wasn't until like uh, Q-Tip and a Tribe Called Quest that made jazz interesting again for me because I'm like, where are these sounds coming from? And, you know, he's introduced, reintroducing us to a sound, but actually doing something new, completely new with it. So that that got me inter interested in it and me becoming a producer, like producing my own tracks. Of course, I'm buying records. I'm looking on the backs of records of who's playing with who and in the jazz moments, you know, in that in that span, uh, you're looking at all of these great players. And then even to know, like, once I get into it and you really understand, like, jazz is probably like one of like one of the ultimate styles of music. And it's like those those people that were doing it, those cats that were doing it, they were like the rappers of that time just because they wore suits and ties, which was just the style. But they were smoking weed, they was doing hair on, they were beating the shit out of each other. They was in nightclubs at night. Eating. Like it was really what the rap community talks about now. It was really happening in jazz. So you have to understand that they, first of all, created a whole style of music, just like hip hop, and then just ran with it. And so when I got into it in that way and started listening to it more, uh, people like Coltrane, for sure Coltrane is like one of my greatest wind um, inspirations. He actually got me wanting to play wind instruments because I just felt so good listening to Coltrane. I wanted to try some of that. I wanted to get in and, you know, and as soon as I picked up a saxophone, I immediately have an armature like, it just happened and I was like, oh, I can get sound. And I just took it from there and just read up on Coltrane and um, read that Coltrane played clarinet first in, high, in elementary school and then went on to play all these wind instruments. So that led me into stranger fields of jazz, you know, the Sun Ra's, you know, and for me, I'm a huge George Clinton fan. So for me knowing that, whoa, there's some styles or interests like that were even precursors to probably, probably parliament. And I'm like, whoa, so some riding them bit on it in a way. And so these were all kind of like unofficial teachers of mine. And I looked up to these people and you gotta think when you young and impressionable and you see these people making beautiful music, making beautifully weird music, making beautifully out there music, it, you know, it touches you. So. Uh, that went into a lot of the production that was happening. So yeah, uh, maybe um, my answer was too long, but. Now you in the tradition of Sun Ra and John Coltrane, ain't no such thing. It's too long. <laughs> Baba Sifu from a place unknown because they don't have a location. I'm a guess he from Baltimore. <laughs> He said, hey, OG, it's an honor being here. What's up, OG? <laughs> he want to know, how do you overcome or how did you overcome self-doubt in releasing this album because it's such a different style? Uh, it's really not uh, an, an overcoming self-doubt. I think it's a, a misunderstanding where people feel like, oh, he's just doubting himself so much. That's why he's not putting out music. For me, it's always been, I have to like it, period. So. If I'm doing something and I like it, it's, it's not even about a question of, you know, anything else. Because if you like it, I mean, you, you want to share it. And I've been close to things that, ah, oh, it's okay, but eh, it's not worth sharing. And I think once we started working on New Blue, I felt um, compelled. It wasn't even like having to wring my arm or having, like people think, you know, I, I'm trying to be different. It's very natural for me to do what I just like to do. It's not even a choice. It's not like I have to make a decision to make a left turn or anything. Like it's just, I'm, I'm into all kinds of music. So, you know, yeah, I, <laughs> it's all music. You know, it's not even like we put these categories in it, but on it rather. But I'm inspired by everything. And I think everybody should, should, should put that in their music. And growing up, you see people like, like Prince, and as a child, I'm watching Prince go through these styles, and I'm like, whoa, so he doesn't have to stay here. Whoa, so these were like markers as a child, like, okay, you can kind of do what you want to do. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think when, when I was watching you record, that was one thing that I had to break in the narrative. I'm like, oh, he, he's playing. He's like, 
he's just trying to play, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's anything like to have, yeah, to have fun with whatever you're doing, you know? To, to be in it, you gotta be like, when I'm in it, I'm for real. Whatever I'm doing is, is for real, but I'm playing being for real, you know? Shout out to playing being for real. <clears throat> Miss Long, Atlanta. Hey, Miss Long. That's a cool name. Any upcoming performances? Or Any upcoming performances? Collaborations? Or collaborations that we should be on the lookout for. You should look, be on the lookout for both of those. Uh, we just announced the tour that's actually starting in New York. Um, so I think we're starting in Brooklyn. So yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, um, the way we made the album, the energy that we take to make it, like it's pulled out of the air. And I can't wait to do that for people live to see it. Because some people are like, oh, it's not improv, you know, no, nah, they on the click track. No, to be completely honest, we go and then we sit back and like, OK, this is it. So I want to do that live for people. And we have a whole tour coming up and we will have special guests pop up in these shows. So so stay tuned um, for the live live set. What are your intentions, Robin wants to know. She in Atlanta too. Uh, my intentions are just to excite myself first. I think everyone needs to be selfish in ways. Um, well, I, that's my way. I think you have to be selfish to impress myself or to turn myself on enough to carry through with it. So my first goal was met when I like it. You know, I just have to like, cause I can't expect nobody else to like it if I don't really like it. So I'm really just trying to have fun, keep myself excited, keep myself inspired. And when it's done, it's done and you want to share it. That's, that's it. So I didn't have any major intentions. Like I didn't know what the album would do. I didn't know how it would sit in people's lives. I just know what I do with it. You know what I mean? Like when I play it the whole time we're making the album, like I'll play it around the house. You know, I'll play it in the car. Um, and I would just hope that other people would, would use it in that way. Hopefully y'all are using it. Who's using that out in the world? <laughs> y'all are using it good. I'm gonna flip this question to Big Carl, who's here somewhere, says Mr. 3000. <laughs> How do you know when a song is complete? But I'm gonna extend that and ask, you know, you talked about there being a three hour version. And I definitely heard a longer version at some point. And how did you get it from that larger work, which you loved to this, what we have all heard, this more refined piece? Uh, it's funny because the last answer was being selfish. The part to not make it three hours was being unselfish <laughs> and considering what's the best way to deliver this where people will get it? You know, and sometimes, uh, like editing is probably like the, the, the biggest player in anything. And you know, in film, you know, uh, editing a scene can make the scene. And I felt like I loved all the music at the three hour version. And uh, I have to say thank you to my label and all the people that sat around for three hours listening to the album. But at a, at a point, I, we were actually in New York mastering and we started to chip away and it was like, hmm, nah, nah. And then the order changed. Uh, so you, you don't know when it's done until you feel that it's done. And I, I, I can't explain what that is, but you just know, you know, but, but the, to cut it down is the unselfish part because you have to be selfish when making it, but when you present it, you have to understand that you're presenting it to people, which is why we let people know it went ham didn't have raps on it, because that would have been, you know, unfair to say to put it out and then people think some verses gonna come on. So, yeah. So it was kind of like, I mean, it's an audience. When you prepare a film for the screen, you're doing it for someone. If not, just sit in your room and listen to it or look at it. You know, so you gotta consider other people. And a lot of the cutting down or the editing or knowing when it's done is like, okay, yeah, this. Yeah, this, I'm ready to present it to people. 
Yeah, we did this for y'all. Shout out to y'all. It's a half and half, yeah. Jacqueline in San Antonio asked a question about values that you've upheld, but I'm gonna focus that a bit just on the value of collaboration. Um, how did you approach collaboration after having taken on a new instrument? Um, I think the like it's it's clear in the recording of the music like it was a collaborative effort, and I've been playing alone, like walking for miles or days or years, just playing, like just kind of getting it under my fingers, and I would just be excited to play. I'd be excited to wake up in the morning and you know play again. Um, so that was a personal thing, kind of just getting my love and my um, connection and understanding to the instrument. I knew I wanted to share, but I didn't know how I wanted to share. And I think life, ser you know, serendipity, um, God, whatever you believe in, um, made it to where I moved to Venice Beach and I ended up meeting a lot of the musicians. And we, we sit and collaborate. And that's kind of like the purest way. And we fill each other out and we're, to collaborate in that way, you have to be pu like purely alive to know what you're doing at that moment. Um, and if you play a bad note, you can't judge it. You got to move on, like move forward. And it's kind of like how life is. So um, the only thing I'm, to answer the question, what value do I, I uphold in the creation? Um, I just, I just have to be inspired or like it. It's, it's just that simple. Those are my only rules because I don't. I never thought I was the best rapper or the best producer or, you know, best any of that kind of thing. But what I do know is when I hear something and my ears, it's a spark. That's my gauge to know. So I only uphold my own self once again. Like, only, yeah, I have to dig it. Kevin Sinatra in the clean. Clean. Tyson's Corner. <laughs> we all know that the master level of artist Andre 3000. <laughs> so my question is a time where people, people's attention span, people attention span is short. What made him want to allow people inside his world on the creation process? Um, because I felt it was beautiful and just worth sharing. That's, Simply it. And then I, I think also like the word beautiful too. Uh, I kind of, I'm 48 years old, so I'm at a time in my life where my focus is I want to make beautiful, valuable things. And not that, you know, a rap album could be beautiful and valuable, but I want it to be uh, intently beautiful or uh, directly directly beautiful so when i say beautiful that's and i and i think the the words away is the beauty in it at this at this point maya from la at the grove wants to know what Royce. advice <laughs> sorry <laughs> what advice would you give young black creators from the south who are feeling constricted by social norms um, I, I don't know the restrictions. I, w I would have to know. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I would have to know which restrictions you're, you're talking about. But I think we're in the best time. Like, we grew up, like, we only had one or two opportunities to make it. Like, you only had, like, a radio station or a record company. If they ain't like you, you just was gone. So, like, now I think the youth or anybody trying to do art or music, you just have so many, like, tentacles now. You have so many ways to get out. You can do something tonight, put it out tomorrow, and just be popping. So it's like we didn't have that opportunity. So I actually think those restrictions are, yeah, you just have way more opportunity, way, way more. Like at a click of a button, you could share a thing, and people will hopefully will like it. Even if back then, even if you had a demo, you only got it to the 10, 20 people you sold, sold it to. You know, so I think the opportunity of technology now um, is almost unstoppable to be dope. It's, it's really kind of unstoppable because everyone has an artist. That, like there'd be an, art, uh, an, an artist 
that sold out Madison Square that I've never even heard of. No, no, I mean, we in that time, it could be like, like my, my nephew, he was, uh, they were talking about some, some artist, um, I can't remember his name, but they were like, yeah, he's selling out. And I've never even heard of this dude. But that's how it is. Everybody has an audience. Back then it was one gate, one door, one audience. You know, so yeah, you don't have to look at it in that way anymore. I just want to say this person's name, Kai Fizzle <laughs> from Charlotte. Kai Fizzle, Key Fizzle. Key Fizzle. Key Fizzle. To make the album heal you in any way. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I think getting up and doing something that you have intent for and accomplishing it does heal, you know? Like even if it's on like a small scale, like the human body, like you have to win. And when I say win, like it can be small, like if you can be like, I'm gonna wash my car today. Yeah. But you really have to do that because if you do it, you don't want and it tells your body, oh, we can win. But if you don't follow through on things like overly losing just don't feel good you know so i think uh com completing the album it started a momentum um that i'm very happy for yeah i want to hear a song called overly losing just don't feel good <laughs> that's a good one let's make it let's make it overly losing just don't feel good. and then make a movie where you do a movement to it yeah yeah <laughs> Everybody good out there? Are we still awake? Alive? Yeah. Oh, they loving this. So what we we had uh we had New York, Dallas. Oh Dallas, wait. yeah, no, we no. had Dallas. Dallas, what up? And, and why not? In Dallas. North Park, shout out to Seven and Erica and Puma and Mars. They shout out to my mama. at the North Park. Um, have you ever scored a movie? Have I ever scored a movie? Uh, yes, it's called New Blue Sun. Nah, uh, now to be completely honest, like when we were making New Blue Sun the whole time, like I'm sitting, I'm looking at Carlos like, man, we got to do a movie, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and actually some of the songs, um, sometimes when we're in the studio and we record them just, just like that, and we may keep recording and move on from that. So we'll give it a title, just a quick reference title. And uh, some of the reference title, like we did a song and we called it like Boba, a Boba Fett Avatar, because it was kind of like, it's kind of sound like Boba Fett and Avatar. So we were like, we were like thinking film and hopefully in the future, uh, no, it will happen. Uh, we will score a film live, score it live. Yeah. Erica from Chicago wants to know, what did the record company think when you wanted to do an entirely instrumental album. Did it take some convincing? Surprisingly, no. No, and this is after they set through the three hour version. <laughs> so like, to be honest, man, I really have to give a hats off to uh, my label and any collaborators that, and any just friends and uh, homies that I let hear the album because I have to put myself on the other side of things sometimes. I'm like, okay, I'm coming in the studio and he gonna play this album and there's no words on it. And I'm in it, you know. Uh, so my label, they had really great things to say, great advice on it, uh, but they were very supportive from, from the jump. Yeah. Hope that I don't mess this, mess this name up. Simple question, Alanda San Antonio wants to know, how long did it take to create this album? Uh, it took about six months, really. The recording process, about six months. We did about three, three different studios. Uh, yeah, three different studios, a few sessions, a lot of sessions, actually. Um, but I think about six, about six months. Yeah. 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 yeah where you at, Carlos? Los! This is Carlos Nino right here, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Omar from New York, he in here somewhere. What up, Omar? AMC Empire. <laughs> Being that you performed in public with the flutes, do you feel any different about performing in front of larger groups of people when it comes to touring the new album? We don't know, we'll see. 
We have we haven't done it. We actually did our first show tonight. It's probably played now. We did Stephen Colbert tonight in front of a live crowd. That was our first ever like live in front of a lot of people. We've done it in front of people before, but in front of a lot of people. So yes, this is a whole like it's almost like being a new artist. Again, we're recording in smaller situations. Like if it was Outcast, we would be out doing festivals and you know, see of people and that kind of thing. So it's kind of like when you're in a small club and people are looking directly at what you're doing and everybody in the room knows we're all making it up as we go along. That's, that's uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. But but they give you energy too, though, like, because you, you're responding to the room, you're responding to yourself, you know. Yeah, it's, it's man, I wish y'all can experience it, man. Like, seriously, yeah. Yeah. We have one more question. Experience it as, as a player, too, is what I mean. Yes, come to it, but I wish you could experience what it feels like to be in it. Yeah, sorry. Ebeth from Indianapolis. Ebeth. 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 Indiana State Museum, White River IMAX. This is one of my favorite things that you talk about. Can you talk about the significance of the name of the album, New Blue Sun? Yeah, it was a, a reference to a, a kind of like a pseudo sci-fi thing that I, I was trying to do. Um, just kind of thinking that the sun that we see every day, the sun that we live under, the sun we get warm from, it's a star, just like all the other small stars in the sky. And at one point, that sun will die. Uh, we don't like to think about it because we ain't going to be around. Our kids, kids, kids ain't going to be around. But it will die at some point. And New Blue Sun is kind of like a reference to what's a new world, complete new world. And in this, in my mind, this world, the sun wouldn't be like a whitish, yellowish light. It would be larger, but blue. Like sometimes you look at a flame and it's blue. Um, it will, in my mind, the sun burns temperature wise cooler than the sun we under now but it doesn't mean that we're colder because it's closer to the planet you see what i'm saying so yeah that's really what it was and the significance uh kind of like double entendre or um double meaning is this was a new venture for me you know this whole way so it was a complete open up of a new world to me so new blue sun is like a new world new way I hope you all feel welcome in this new world. And you take this experience out into New York City with you. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. Thanks to everybody who worked on the film who's here, everybody who worked on the album. Gratitude to all of you all. Thank you to IMAX for making this happen supporting this, supporting art. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. I love y'all too, man. Appreciate it. I, I, I really, really appreciate it. I, I appreciate it having someone to uh, share things with. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to say one thing um, as soon as I step into this um, theater, I realized that popcorn is underrated. <laughs> <laughs> Movie butter popcorn in, in particular is, is underrated. So thank you all for, um, for bringing me to that smell <laughs> today. Yeah. Hey. Hey, hey. You say, well, you think you're too old. No, no, I don't think I'm too old to rap at all. What I was saying is when I find um, a way to talk about my 48-year-old life that I feel is interesting enough, because just talking about it ain't cool enough for me. Like, you gotta, it still got to be hit in a certain way. And that's, that's the only issue. So it's not like there's like a boycott. So it was really a joke about, do I talk about, you know, prostate exam? Like, you know. <laughs> It was, it was really a joke, but if I find a cool way to say that, you'll hear it. 
And so the, the hold up is just trying to find a, a, a really fly way to, to tell the truth because that's all I've kind of wanted to do when I started rapping. I just thought other rappers before me like, oh, these niggas tell, tell the truth, that's what they do. Oh, so that's what I'm charged to do. So I can't be out here acting like I'm in the club or, you know, I got this or it, because it just don't, it, it, it don't register with me. At, I don't care about none of that. So I can't talk about none of that. So if I find a way to talk about my life, it's gonna come. So yeah, stay tuned. I just don't want people to think, oh, he just too good for rap, but don't want to rap. Or, no, I'm always trying to figure out how to how to find a, a new way to do it. Cause I get bored with doing things, and sometimes flows get old to me. You know, even like, yeah, flows get old to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Now, y'all, be safe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah.